Welcome to the final race before the uh, round before the American 700, the ninth running of the American 700. The round of Michigan, though, is upon us, and the big concern going into this weekend is the safety. Uh, they have slowed the cars down a little bit through one of those power reductions they tried at Daytona. Uh, cars are doing about one, or not one, 233 down the straightaways to 235. However, they have packed up a little more, and it's, in fact, almost made the race more dangerous than it was before. A lot of drivers need to really be on their toes for this weekend, and uh, it looks like getting out of here with everybody in one piece might be the main goal here at Michigan International Speedway. Uh, right now, that's looking like it's going to be easier said than done. We've had a couple of close calls in practice where cars have rocketed up towards the wall. Uh, Kenny Mine had another one here. Uh, I believe Nathan McCain did as well. It seems like this track doesn't like Ohioans very much, but uh, you can tell it's something different when um, not even the uh, Ohio-Michigan prank wars tend to take place at the Ohio and Michigan rounds are taking place because I think everybody's more worried about the safety today. Uh, it's been, it's not a very good situation coming into this race, but we get out of here with one piece. We'll go on to next week, which is the biggest race of the season, the American 700, and what a race it will be. Let's go down to the race itself here at Michigan. DJ Kurt, or Vincent Allen, leads the field down to the green. Sorry about that. Vincent Allen's going to lead the field down to the green here at Michigan International Raceway, and we are away here. Uh, for 60 laps of what only can be said as hold your breath racing. Uh, a lot of safety concerns today uh, about the, just the overall durability of the cars and a wreck this fast. It already looks like we're up to 212 going down the straightaway here. And they're saying we might even go faster today. But it looks like here they go down the straightaway. Nathan McCain, the Ohioan's going to jump to the lead. I'm sure to the chagrin of all the Michigan fans here. They don't want to see an Ohioan lead the first lap, but it looks like McCain's going to lead it, and we're already beyond the 233, which is the fastest top speed we saw in practice. 234 there for Nathan McCain. However, uh, very, very high speeds around this track. Don't want to see a uh, wreck at this uh, stage of the game. Here comes Christian Van Der Pesch, who's been one of the fastest cars this part of the season. He will be a threat for the American 700 crown. And it looks like Vander Pesch is gonna try for the lead here, but it, uh, McCain's holding him off, but McCain's gonna go for the lead now. A Little further back, we're seeing Alex Allen. Oh, we the V12 cars are working their way forward. They didn't exactly qualify that well, because yesterday, weather conditions favored the uh, grippiness of the turbo V6. However, today, it's all about outright speed. V12, the way to go today. And, uh, well, we're just hoping, like I said, we're just hoping that everybody here gets out of this all right safely. There's Cody Lamas in the back. Trek Tauger not doing well in the back. Uh, although that could be planned that they hold out in the back. Uh, Noah Hart, surprisingly, isn't doing that well either. But now you got, uh, Nathan McCain and Jessica Shelton. Jessica Shelton won at this track's sister track, uh, Canadian International, except CIS is a little bit wider, actually, than Michigan, I want to say. But Shelton now looking her way to get her way up the order. That would be something impressive to see Jessica Shelton up the order quickly because she kind of excels on these types of tracks. Further back, here comes Skyla Johnson and another uh, Turbo V6 car. So these, these grippy cars, they're not completely gone yet, but... You still need some of that grip, but it's becoming a lot more difficult uh, with these V12s in the field, such as the uh, KIR cars. But it looks like Vander Pesch is actually pushing away a little, but pulling away a little by little there, which is not what they want to see, especially with how Vander Pesch has been the last couple of days or last couple of weekends with um, being just on a tear lately. 
try and get as many points as he can. Vander Pesch could be a rookie champion the way this is going. However, towards the back now, we're seeing some of this pack racing that we were worried about. There's the 44 car. That is a little of Tyler Thaber. Thaber was the only car to ha not have any points scored. However, now he does after Martinsville. Uh, that will That's a little preview to the car he is expecting to be or that's the car that is uh, probably going to be used for the American 700 uh, next weekend. So that will be a very interesting showing there for Tyler Thaber uh, in that car. That car does look like one of Thaber's better cars on the grid, that rainbow striped and black 44 car. As it looks like uh, more competitive racing up front, here comes Sean Angel now. Angel could be a definite threat for Vander Pesch to deal with, but Vander Pesch has been the hottest driver lately on the grid as here comes now some of the more V12 cars. Here, Washer's coming up. Looks like Alex Allen's coming up the grid, and here comes Tuoma Sarnan, the winner of Oklahoma. I also wanted to highlight that this race is also about uh, 10 miles shorter than normal, and the reason why that is is the first five laps of this race were actually run behind the pace car because of um, the possibility of tire issues, so, or no, of um, actually track drying conditions. Uh, There's a slight sprinkle here and they had to dry up the pit road where the cars were, couldn't dry it up. So the first five laps were actually under uh, pace lap conditions, so uh, we're just right now holding out hope that the rain holds off. As you can see, it's kind of dry here, but, or it's kind of cloudy rather, but thankfully it's dry, but here comes the two Ferraris up the order, so they, they only, back on the whole race thing, they only have uh, 120 miles instead of 130 miles to get uh, what they need done today to win this race, so that could help or could be a negative for some of these drivers. New leader, Chris Washer, the Uper, the Michigan native, takes the lead here at the round of Michigan. He dives down low. He will grab the lead away from Christian van der Pesch in his uh, V12 Ferrari. This race will suit the Ferraris because they've had reliability issues in the past. And well, that's going to be good for Ferrari because then it's a little bit shorter. Because, well, uh, who knows with this race. But it looks like here comes Tuoma Sernan as well. Up the order, so it's a Ferrari 1-2, but Nick Mace is also looking back there. This is another type of track Mace excels at. A little further back, you got Katone Nakagawa. In these pack races, the Menervinis tend to do very well because they have a big engine. Uh, we already saw Nico Poyakov shockingly upset the round of Florida. Jake Baskinger's, despite having mediocre finishes the last couple of weekends, Still has the point lead because no one up towards the top of the charts has been able to uh, get a good run in. And Baskinger's on course once again for another mediocre finish. However, thankfully, this race seems to be a little bit more calm than we thought it would be, but one wreck could be catastrophic around this track. As you know, as uh, Jake Baskinger is falling backwards a little by little, it's going to be difficult as we go up the order a little bit. We're seeing some other cars up here. Ryan Griffin's becoming more and more of a championship contender. As this race goes on, he's in his home race here at, Mich at uh, Michigan International Speedway. Not sure where he's from in Michigan, but uh, hopefully it's around here for his sake. Big fan support for him. And here is the most hated man in the entire state of Michigan, Kenny Myatt. Uh, running P7 right now. This wasn't one of Myatt's favorite tracks on the schedule. He was not too comfortable going into this weekend. Uh, he was one of the more ones that were the most uh, concerned about the speed, however. He seems to be doing a good job there for having a Turbo V6 car. It seems like only the Turbo V6s and the V12 seem to be doing well. Even a little further down the order, I'm not seeing any V8s or V10s, really. Uh, going down the order. Yeah, there might be a, one of them's a Subaru. That is a V6, I'm sorry. The SBRs are V6s. There's a V10 and Jessica Shelton, but it's proving that uh, grip, you have to have an either enhanced grip or enhanced engine speed. And right now, if you don't have an enhanced one or the other, you're not doing well. And all the V8s and the V10s don't seem to be cooperating that well. 
One car that is impressing me, though, is Ike Durbin. Ike Durbin hasn't done that bad in the uh, 21 car. He has done actually pretty well today uh, qualifying here. He qualified, I believe, in the top 10, and he slotted into 16th in front of Nick Pericles there. Uh, now, pit stops are looking like they're going to be a big factor in this race once the field spreads out, if we get green flag pit stops, that is. So, um, I'm believing that anyone really in this lead pack who is pretty much all the way back to, well, 32nd could end up leading this race towards the end of the race. But, uh, here's a group of cars that lost the pack to two Oricons, James Shelley and Noah Hart. They lost the pack. Paul Athanos and Michael Cavignaro on the Binghamton lost the pack. And Cody Lamas has got some sort of engine problem with that car. Lamas has not had a good weekend, however, a uh, good year so far. But now they're saying Cody Lamas will be ready for the American 700 with a Audi is bringing prototype cars to the grid for the American 700. So watch Ike Durbin and Cody Lamas next weekend for the American 700 as they try and go for that crown for the American 700. Join the list of uh, legends such as Vincent Allen, DJ Curtis, two Red Bull drivers there, Sean Perkins, VJ Pachanda, our competition director. Uh, Jacob Hart is in this field. He is a former American 700 winner, uh, amongst other drivers in the field. So we are going to see uh, these people, and they are going to use this race as a bit of a test for them. As here goes Christian Vander Pesch to the lead, because this track does seemingly kind of have a little bit of the characteristics that uh, Fontana does, or that the Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California has. However, it wouldn't take long for Chris Washer to dive back to the lead. Washer is doing a very strong job here. He wants to win in front of his home crowd. And, well, a little further back, we're going through the order a little bit more. Nakagawa is doing an awesome job up there. And here comes Allie Nelson, the Michigander herself, flying up the order. I believe Allie Nelson's from Michigan. I'm not sure, but here she comes flying up the or order. She's been having a very strong tear the last couple of weekends. Uh, she hasn't done too badly at some of these other tracks, and she did very, very well at uh, Martinsville. Excellent pit strategy call by the Subaru Brigade. I am going to be watching them in the near future. I gotta also give props to Nick Mace. Nick Mace hasn't had the start of the season that he's wanted. He's another former American 700 champion. Uh, Nick Mace needs to get up the order a little bit more, I think, to really sell, or needs to figure out that he can get by these two cars. He's just kind of hung there in third, and he needs to prove that he has uh, race-winning contender cars. We're approaching the halfway mark. We're only 20 minutes into the race, and we're halfway, so right now, we're approaching halfway, so right now we're actually on course for an Arkansas Elite Series record ever since they went to the 130-mile distance. Actually, the race will somehow, because there was another, like, five minutes, six minutes, there was another ten minutes there. So now Vander Pesch is working his way up the order. And, whoa, Saturday got a little squirrely there in the 27 car. But Chris Washer here, I was saying that there, um, we had about ten minutes there where for those five laps that we were under yellow for the track drying procedures. And, um, well, for the, that bit of time, we're still on course for a possible, because if we're at halfway, that would get us right at around 51 minutes, which would be a new race record for 130 miles to going that fast, 130. So, that's impressive, I gotta say. Good job, AES boys. However, pit stops would begin here Chris Washer leads this group down the order as a couple of other cars uh, pitted a lap earlier. And a few cars actually stayed out a bit longer as well. Christian Vander Pesch, Nick Mace, uh, Henry Samper were all ones in that brigade. Look at Vander Pesch coming in very late committing to pit road. Uh, somehow I don't think... Oh, there goes the one! The one car lost control there. I hope he can save it. He's going to have to go around again. He's not going to get in that time, that way. No way. No way. Now, are they under yellow or not? Because if they aren't, that will be interesting. No, they're not. So McCain got royally screwed out there. And this is 
going to be a very interesting pit strategy race now where these drivers are going to have to worry about the way where they're pitting and what they're doing or specifically how long they're on pit road because if they're quickly look look at Nakagawa actually Chris Washer had the best pit stop he's miles in front of everybody else and now we're gonna see here where is Vander Pesch in comparison to Washer Oh, it's going to be close, but I think Washer's going to get him here. Well, oh, Vander Pesch has got him. Vander Pesch has got both. Vander Pesch and Mace have him. So Christian Vander Pesch is going to be the leader here as Chris Washer now is trying to get on the outside line, and it now looks like these guys are really in-depth on trying to get that race record. The previous race record, I believe, was a race at... If I'm going back in time, CIS, when Jessica Shelton won, was the fastest race. And I think that was under 50 minutes. No, it was one at Talladega, we're hearing. It was one at Talladega. No, I take that back again. It was, uh, yeah, one of Talladega's races was the fastest. And now uh, we're getting really close to that margin now with Chris Washer with Christian Van Der Pesch actually leading Chris Washer around here. There's Nathan McCain finally making his pit stop. He is going to be dead last, I believe. Christian Van Der Pesch now, he's lapping past Cody Lamas now, and here comes Chris Washer now back up the order. Actually, third place now is Henry Sanford. Sanford's kind of on a tear now, getting grip now, as it's not a pack race anymore. It's just straight up grip now. I mean, I'm not really seeing going through the field that big of a pack. Uh, here's a little bit of one, but not nearly big enough to catch these guys up front. Not nearly enough. However, everybody's run to try and see if they can get the fastest race. Fastest 130-mile uh, race in Elite Series would be halted by a rain shower. So now we're under yellow here for rain. Vander Pesch. Washer, Sanford, uh, Lamas is a lap down, the only car to be lapped other than Nathan McCain, so still no cars have fallen out of this race, surprisingly enough. Uh, a little further back, we're looking at Tuomas Saarinen. So yeah, now we're going to see who's going to bail for Pit Road and who won't. Oh, we might be got our first blow up there. Looks like Ike Durbin's going to be the first car to go out of the race today. Not a good day for Durban Sport. I just jinxed everybody, and now they're really starting to screw around here because they don't know where Durban's supposed to slot in the line. Durban's getting off the track. Oh, we had a wreck, it looked like. What happened there? I don't think we did get a wreck there. That was actually from Myatt's wreck earlier, but Sean Angel now is blowing up, so I must have really jinxed the field because now we've got two grenades under caution, so tough break for both of these guys. And I did it again. Chris Washer now has a mechanical problem. All under, all within a lap of each other, three cars are breaking down. That might be a tire, though, on Washer's car. We at least hope it is for his sake, because he was having a fantastic showing in his home race. One of the only cars that could keep up with Christian Van Der Pesch was the uh, 28 car, so tough break for... Um, Chris Washer there. I hope he's going to finish this race. It looks like now we might actually get some cars that are going to bail for pit road. I'm thinking. Yeah, there must have been a wreck. I'm not sure if that was Myatt's or not. Noah Hart also would die for pit road as well. They're going to fall to the back of the train, but they're going to have new tires. That could be a strategy there. I'm wondering. Tough break for Sean Angel, however. And those tire marks apparently were from Myatt's wreck uh, because no one can, no one wrecked during this race so far other than that McCain wreck. But, oh, we got another car blowing up in the back. Oh my gosh, we've got two of them going up in smoke. We got Hudson, looks like Aaron Perkins might be going. Aaron Perkins is going and Matt Duncan's going. So three more cars have just grenaded. 
Christian Vander Pesch. And I think they are going green this time, despite all the um, reliability woes there. No, it doesn't look like Aaron Perkins is blowing up, but she's got something else going on with her car. Another Michigan native. Good start there by Vanderpesh. Away we go now. And we're still on course to possibly take the record for the fastest race. And we are hearing words that I thought it was the Blue Ridge race. Canadian International at Blue Ridge Peaks in Vancouver that uh, took over the uh, race uh, for the shortest race, and it apparently was. They thought it was Talladega. However, they were close. They had two really close races with each other, but Christian Vander Pesch versus Henry Sanford. A little further back, you got Skyla Johnson, Tomas Saren, and where's the 28 of Chris Washer? Washer was one of the faster cars. He's got new tires. Reportedly, that was a planned move. That was a planned move to pit. However, he right now is a long way down the order. He's going to have to hope for a caution, really. And with the way that these guys have been racing, the only caution we've seen is for rain. They've been racing pretty cleanly, believe it or not. Now Henry Sanford is going to be our leader. However, with only a couple laps to go, Vander Pesch would dive low to take the lead again. And we're seeing Alex Allen starting to work his way up the order with Kenny Maya and Saarinen, but I don't think either of them is going to catch these two. Vander Pesch and Henry Sanford, two of the leading candidates for Rookie of the Year. And I thought I saw the caution lights on, but they're not. Nico Puyakov is going to go a lap down. He is down a cylinder. A lot of really wonky stuff that's happened in this, under that caution, but here we go. We're coming to the end of it. Four to go. Or, nah, it might be five, five to go this time. And now here comes Henry Sanford looking low again. He's diving low, and now it's going to be who uses the Menervini to their advantage, or will the Menervini just get out of the way and not let either of them use him as an advantage? Of Polyakov, what will Polyakov do? He's going to go up and block Vander Pesch. So now Sarenin's going to be in the game. Oh, no, maybe. I don't know what they're doing. It looks like he's going to give it to Henry Sanford at that rate. Not a whole lot of time left. Four laps to go, and it looks like now it's going to be Sarenin versus Alex Allen to try and catch Henry Sanford. With only two to go, little by little, these two are catching him. However, Alex Allen cannot go past him. It's going to be the final lap this time for Henry Sanford. I don't think they're going to do it. I think Sanford's going to win it at this rate. But here they come. Off the final corner, white flag this time. They're going to have to really close the gap now. Considerably faster, Sarenin is, but I don't think he's got enough time. And if he does, it's going to be a last lap move, and especially if Alex Allen's going underneath him. Just not enough time. Henry Sanford is going to go through turns three and four. Sanford comes off turn four. He's going to win. The Ohio base team's going to win at Michigan. In the fastest race by a near 10 minutes. No, actually by a near Two minutes, actually, because you have to add the 10 minutes before the race started that they were circling the track. By a mere two minutes, the fastest 130-mile race in the Arkansas Elite Series history. Goes to Henry Sanford. Second position was Tuomas Saren. And third was Alex Allen. Great return. It's been a while since Alex Allen's been on a podium. Kenny Myatt's going to be fourth. Fifth is going to be Skyla Johnson. Sixth is Josh Travell. Seventh is DJ Curtis. Eighth is Ryusu. Ninth is Vander Pesch. Tenth is Griffin. Ryan Griffin, the Michigander, finishing tenth. Let's go down to your finishing results.